Hey y'all, I'm Courtney. And I'm Sarah. And this is Bodice Siblings. The podcast where we read all the books we used to steal off our grandmother's nightstands. And then we drink about it. On this episode, we read Kay Hooper's All for Quinn. Um, the only trigger warnings on this are, um, if you are an international jewel, there is an international jewel thief. Some chloroforming. Yes, very old-fashioned chloroforming. There's Interpol, if that's like bringing back some uh, some memories of being scared that Interpol was going to get you for uh, for pirating VHS tapes with a lot of coaxial cable and two VCRs. Why would that be Interpol, though? That would be the FBI. I don't know. They always had, they had the FBI, <laughs> and then they would have the Interpol thing. I don't know. I thought that Interpol would be like a bigger facet of my adult life, always. I think that's just wishful thinking. <laughs> um, so, yeah, maybe wishful thinking. If you, like, yeah. regret, life regret, that could be one of the, the <laughs> trigger warnings. Um Yeah, this is just some hot nonsense. Hot nonsense. (laughs) We actually uh, read this book because uh, my boss, who read all these books back in the day, when I was um, like telling her that we did not agree on whether White Lies was a caper or not. She's like, oh, no, no, no. But if you wanted a caper, you want a K. Hooper one about a jewel thief. And I was like, shit, sign me up, bitch. Yeah, it was it was it was very entertaining. So thank you to Chantal for the suggestion. Um, So let's dive in i guess yeah oh wait what are we drinking first courtney got the best wine for this oh my god so <laughs> i was at the the fancy grocery store you got to go to the fancy grocery store to get it get, i mean I, i'm sure this is everywhere there's the <laughs> there's the cheap grocery store like your iga your food lines and then you have your fancy grocery stores which are your Publix and now lowe's oh yeah lowe's so i'm at lowe's which is like food disney world there's fake cheese statues and things like that. And not the inside, like not the actual grocery part. That's like like a little bit not as good as Publix, but the outside is really good. It's got a fake smell like sent mm-hmm. in. And they got um, like the grocery carts have a, thing, a place to put your beer that you can get in the yes. store, which I anyway, do appreciate. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm in there and I see this bottle and I basically just <gasps> suck all the air out of the lows. <laughs> it is one of the 19 crimes, which is all, you know, fitting for an inner national jewel heist book but it is the 19 crimes martha's shard edition if you guys are familiar with the snoop dog 19 crimes snoop dog's bff miss martha stewart now has her own chardonnay and i have to say like i don't like chardonnay i bought it just because it was martha and it's pretty good like I like a good Chardonnay. I don't like those ones that are sweet. Yeah, like this is very, like, one. this is very drinkable, and I would highly suggest Martha Shard. It has her face on the cork. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's I'm obsessed with Martha Shard. It might be my new, like, to-go wine. <laughs> so, yes, that is what we are drinking, and it is ace. We do have a new Patreon shout-out. Yes, so we would like to welcome Meta from, I'm assuming, the UK. Yeah, because it said pounds on yeah. the thing, so we're gonna, just going to guess. So thank you for your support. Um, And if you guys want to support us, you can find us at patreon.com slash bodice tipplers. And we have all ranges. And if you don't want to make a monthly donation, you can also just pledge a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Or you can like and subscribe and tell all your friends about it. Yes. Rate and review. There's all sorts of ways that you can support us. So let's talk about this Banana Pants K. Hooper book. First, let's talk about Kay Hooper. Kay Hooper comes from my neck of the woods of North Carolina. Um, she was born in California, but her family moved to North Carolina. She's from Rutherford County. Ooh. And if you're from North Carolina, there's Rutherford County, and then there's Rutherfordton. And you have to say Rutherfordton. Very, very specific. <laughs> Rutherfordton had its own mint. Mm. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> and our girl Kay, she went to... Again, blast from my past. Isothermal Community College, which I think is the best name. She is pretty well known. This is my first one of her books. But she her first book was called The Lady Thief. And it was published in 1981. And she's published over 70 books. She's made the New York Times bestseller list in, two th- in 2000 with her book Stealing Shadows. And was nominated for the Seamus Award for Best Original P.I. Paperback for House of Cards. And she lives in... Rutherford, in, <laughs> sorry, she lives in Rutherford, North Carolina. Yeah, it's with not her the same thing, yeah. With her, you know, she lives near her father and her siblings, and she has cats and kittens that she fosters for the community pet center, a nonprofit rescue organization 
whose board she also sits on. Oh, well, good for her. So Kay Hooper is a cat lady, and I think that is pretty clear in this book. Yes, yes. Kay Hooper is obviously a cat lady. Yes. Uh, So this is interesting because it is a love swept okay and it is very love swept um you know the cover is very love swept but but it is the fourth in a series and i just assumed like you know chantelle told me like oh you, you should really read them all but this is the one that's about the jewel thief so i was like oh, how do you really have to read them all it's a fucking love swept you freaking do <laughs> Add it. yeah this book is it's pretty complicated for a love for being 225 pages yeah it's not like it sits you down at the beginning and says okay so christy had a great idea one summer we're gonna have a baby series club like it drops you right in the middle of that shit yes and these people have all like all of your characters have been around each other for the past three other books and they have established connections and relationships that, that are outside of just you know your usual hero heroine books mm-hmm. Or like, 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 yeah, they are siblings, which is, you know, usual and expected. But they're siblings who, they're not just siblings. They're also international jewel thieves and shit. I mean, like, very co- I was like action going on. <laughs> and I thought that she would at least be new. Like, that's what I figured is that the no, men would yeah. be like go in like, and make cameos in each other's books, which is really common. But that she would be new to the thing. Oh, no, this man has been bleeding on her floor like last week. Yeah. And there, I think every, <laughs> like everybody is central to the books. It's not just like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Oh, you remember me from that book? No, yeah. like they're part of the books. So. It's the love sweat. I cannot imagine any other reading a love sweat. But then I thought, you know what? This is actually kind of my childhood experience of reading these books. They would just come into your life and you would pick it up and you'd be like, well, I don't know if this is number five, number eight, number 12. Who cares? Where are the boobs? You just couldn't, <laughs> and you couldn't Google it. You would have had to go to the library and like ask the librarian like, hey, ma'am, <laughs> is this one... <laughs> Oh, the cover is glorious. So, yes, the cover is great. It is one of those. Um, it, it's not one of the love swept that's got like the the amorphous kind of cloud thing. It's the, the, the love swept that's got like a defined border. Yeah. But it's bright green. It's love, love swept 631. And he's this blonde guy. Ugh. She kind of looks like she's like passing out and he's trying to like hold her up. And, and, and she's like going limp or whatever. But she's wearing a bomb ass dress like with the shoulders like a bear, and it's got like some kind of like strap business in the back, and you know, it's it's very, very. Romantic. The outfit is in the book. Yes, it is. I like it when they do that. A yes, lot. I, I know that's a Sarah Jam. It is a Sarah Jam. I mean, somebody read it. Yes. <laughs> okay, y'all ready for the? I'm ready for the copy. Quinn, a charming scoundrel who stole her heart and took her breath away. He was a prince among thieves, a legend who can open any lock, elude any pursuer. But only a special woman had ever captured the mysterious Quinn, and then only for an evening. Morgan West knew the risk she was taking when she let herself fall under the sensual spell of the man who was expected to rob the mystery's past exhibit at the museum she ran. But the rogue was damnably easy to love. A daredevil burglar or a warrior of secret purpose? (laughs) <laughs> sorry that's dumb <laughs> swept by destiny and her rebel's heart into a renegade's embrace morgan feared for quinn's safety even as she dreamed of revenge for his cavalier theft of a precious necklace she'd treasured enticed beyond reason to possess the reckless temptress who'd beguiled him and ensnared his heart quinn chanced a perilous plan that could cost him all he'd cherished could morgan keep her lover from the brink that's promising a lot. <laughs> this book is very, like, I don't understand how Kay Hooper, she is one of those, like, let me use five descriptors <laughs> for a thing. I don't know how she got all the descriptors that she used and the plot and these 40 extra characters in 225 pages. Yeah. Like, funny. I feel like this book is, like, in Sorcelled or something and that, like, that book was really much longer and we just didn't know it because there is a lot. Yes. This is from 1993, yes. by the way. So are we ready to jump in what the well, fuck I'm, happens in this book? I'm ready. First, I would like us all to take a moment to appreciate that usually by this time, Sarah and I have started this over about 15 times, and Sarah is usually aggravated, and we're still on, on time yeah. one. So yeah. celebration. Yeah. Oh, woo, woo, woo. Maybe we're finally Maybe we're finally professional. No. 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 Definitely not. <laughs> so... This starts out with, like, my favorite fucking thing in the world, right? Um, It's a big fancy party, and everybody is wearing their big fancy party stuff. And it's in a museum, and it's glamorous, and it's, uh, like, about to open an exhibit. And one of the people there is an international jewel thief. And one of the people there is an international jewel thief who's secretly working for Interpol. Yes. 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 That's That's, We got two, when two international jewel thieves cross paths um so basically this is like the sexy muppet caper 
uh, obviously the the great Muppet Caper is the sexiest of the Muppet movies. <laughs> and I will be referencing that movie a lot during this because that is what I, I use as my benchmark for amazing caper stories. So <laughs> in this, <laughs> Quinn is obviously the Charles Grodin character. Okay. Um, but he is Quinn by night when he is cat burglaring. And then he is Alex by day when he is just an English dude. Yeah. So he and Morgan are he, are heroine. She works in the museum. She's an anthropologist slash archaeologist. And she is gorgeous, but she's also very smart. Kind of buttoned up. Kind of that type. Yeah. Well, and she is fun. So, like, they, they've met in one of the other three previous books when the bad international jewel sleep thief <laughs> shoots quinn and, and his uh, his uh code name is uh nightshade nightshade it it's not nightwing that's, <laughs> that's dick grayson yeah. yes nightshade mm. so she has saved quinn slash alex for henceforth we're just going to call him quinn because these names are very confusing at least for me she saves his life in one of the previous books, and he thanks her by stealing a necklace. And she's big pissed off about it, which yes. I understand. I mm -hmm. think he gives it back, but it's like, ha, 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 I could do it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, he's at this party, and she's kind of like, what are you doing here? And he's like, smooth, you know? <laughs> but she knows that they're, they have a plan, and she is in on this plan, to lure Nightshade in because he's not going to be able to resist this particular little jewel it's a collection yeah. of mysteries past there's the mysteries past is the name of the exhibit and then the like there's this particular collection owned by max who was in one of the previous books and it's the bollinger jewels and they've got like a weird kind of spooky backstory yeah one of them is cursed but yeah. I, I do god i love a cursed jewel and they know <laughs> that like max's plan or what max has broadcast is that after this exhibit he is going to break the collection up and he is going to send it to various museums all over the world which would make it much harder to steal yeah, if you want to steal it you gotta steal it now you gotta baby steal it now so <laughs> there's a, a a big sting that's been set up and so she sees quinn and they have they have flirty banter they have flirty banter oh yes um you know they're dancing she's in this fancy dress She's in this like backless dress. She's very, very buck buxom and beautiful, and and people like uh, think uh, assume she's, she's an smart. idiot, yeah. yeah, because she's like she's got them big, tig old bitties. Mm -hmm. The knocker is nuclear, and so she's been in entranced by Quinn since the beginning, and he, you can't, you know, it's very on par with these things, and that like Charles Grodin. With the seduction of Miss Piggy, mm -hmm. and that you don't know. Also busty. <laughs> also busty, and also <laughs> people don't think she's that smart because she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and she saves the day in the Great Muppet Caper. There you just go. Like, it's basically the same story. <laughs> so just go watch that. Now, um, so she doesn't know how much of what he is telling her, like, you know, he's flirty and all this, like, how much of it is real and how much of it is him just like trying to charm her. And I mean, she has to have like in her mind, like she knows that he is there. Like, she's told that he's there working with Interfall, but she's like, he's going to be real tempted by this fucking jewelry. <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. Like what's to keep him? Like, what's the leash? Like, what's the when you've got the great baseball diamond on display, <laughs> what is going to keep somebody from taking it? Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, well, hopefully <laughs> your goddamn museum security system. But that's the museum security system is in the the capable hands of Storm, the southern lady who is marrying. Was it? Wolf. Wolf, which is the most ridiculous thing. And she carries a cat around on her shoulder. So that's a previous book that I think we're going to have to read. Oh, that one sounds delightful. Yeah, so <laughs> we find out at the beginning that Quinn is brothers with this other guy who is working for Interpol named Jared. Jared Chevalier. Jared Chevalier. He's another book, and he marries this woman named, like, Danielle, and they call her Danny. And then... We have Wolf, who is another book, and he is with Storm. They're half brothers, so they don't look really a yeah, lot. But we don't all like we don't find out they're half brothers until the well, you know, you, well, you knew if you were to read the yeah, yeah. So <laughs> she doesn't. Morgan no. doesn't. So basically, <laughs> what Quinn tells her is he's like, "All right, I'm part of this Interpol. Like Interpol has hired me, international, you know, jewel jewel thief Charles Grodin, to help lure out this evil international jewel thief." 
<laughs> and we're going to catch him. But the reason that I, he, I need him to think that I'm hanging around here because I'm courting you. So you and I are going to go on all these fancy dates and do all this kind of stuff. Well, the idea is that he, uh, the, the bad jewel thief will think that Quinn is there to steal the stuff for himself. And so that he's using her yeah. to get in on that. Now, uh <laughs> I believe we mentioned in the previous book that Quinn was shot and Morgan saved him. I don't remember if we mentioned that the evil international jewel thief is the one that shot him. And the international jewel thief, has the evil one, has also killed some girl that Quinn was really close to. So we know he's like genuine He's bad. a ruthless international jewel. Yeah, he's a bad dude. Well, and the, the hilarious thing is in this world, like Morgan goes and researches Quinn in the newspaper because in this world, they breathlessly write up the crimes of international jewel thieves. I mean, it's completely accurate because that's what happens in the Great Muppet Caper. Yeah. They're, they, you know, Kermit and Fozzie, they're journalists and they come to England to cover this story. So, I mean, it's completely true, Sarah. It sounds like there's trading cards, though. You know, like, <laughs> this is exactly how I thought the world worked yeah. like, at the age this book came out because I read so many books like this. Oh, my God. You know, so many airport novels. <laughs> this is previous guest, John, his grandmother was part of the upper crust of Camden back Oh, in the my day. God. Yes. And like for people who aren't from here, that's not a big Oof. deal, but like it's a big deal. And like she used to be friends with governors and, you know, worked on like numerous Democratic campaigns. So she's always been a force for good. Um, it was Gigi is what he called but her. But Camden money is is old and big, y'all. <laughs> and so he and his grandmother, when John was very young, they went to go see the new Thomas Crown Affair. Mm -hmm. And his grandmother took an instant dislike to Renee Russo. There's a part where <laughs> Renee Russo is topless and Gigi in the middle of the theater says, look at her walking around like she's got something. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I think of when I think of these international <laughs> jewel eyes <laughs> is Gigi just Ugh. being like, Ugh, about Ugh. Renee Russo. <laughs> anyway, that's many digressions, but they're good. So yeah, we have this whole sting operation happen. And again, Quinn is going to pretend, quote unquote, to court Morgan. So Nightshade sees him hanging around. And then Nightshade, it'll be a, I know that you know, that you know that I know kind of thing <laughs> where he knows that he is just trying to get close to Morgan to steal the jewels. And then they're going to have a team up mm -hmm. because it's very complicated. There's the plot as described to Morgan. There is the plot as described to the owner of the collection. And then there's the plot that seems to actually be happening, which Morgan finds out like way later on in yeah. the thing. And this is actually happening, which we might as well tell you now, which is that Alec or Quinn is actually working with Nightshade to double cross him. Yeah. So he's working as like Nightshade's like what assistant in turn. I'm not. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like he has to prove to Nightshade that he means business. So he steals these diamonds. Um, and, <laughs> you know, well, anyway, in the midst of all this, not, uh, Quinn and Morgan are going out on dates. They're having, like, making connections. They go to a, um, a donor dinner, which sounds absolutely terrible. Like, the book actually knows that it's terrible. Oh, my God. And, like, she gets all flustered because she really has, like, she is, she is for this guy from the jump. Like, she wears her sexy beaded vest. Ooh. She wears her sexy beaded vest at work and she's always looking for him because it's always, you know, he's a night owl. So he's only going to be there like uh, right around closing time. Which what a time to neglect your job when you actually know that an international jewel thief is coming for your jewels. And that's not like a, a euphemism. I don't even know case. what her job like. I mean, again, we'll get into that later. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Like, is she a curator? Like, what is she? I don't know. But they talked about the curator with like a dismissive tone. Yes. So I don't know <laughs> what she was. Anyway, so they're having dates. They're, you know. Making this connection. And then one night, like, she figures out, like, part of his whole, like, double, like, whatever, his, like, layers of schemes is that he's not just trying to make Nightshade think that he's using her. He's actually, like, using her and making her kind of, like, be super into him to keep her off of the trail of something. So she goes to confront him. Yeah, she's mad. She's pissed off because she's like, wait a minute. You just tried to yeah. get me high on, on dick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she does, like, a storm up to the museum and finds, like, she's like, if 
oh, we're an international jewel thief. This is where I would go. So she goes to the fire escape and she gets chloroformed. Yes. Old school. Old school chloroformed. And, you know, she wakes up and Quinn is there with his brother, Jared Chevalier. Um, and he's, you know, he carries her down the fire escape and like five blocks to her house or something. Like, and nobody calls the cops or anything. Nobody's like, ma'am, are you okay? Ma'am, do you know this man? <laughs> no, nobody says anything. She gets home. She's like, I'll put on my least sexy outfit, my sweatpants and these fuzzy slippers. And you know, in real life, she would have the worst headache. Oh my God. You know, and they, they talk it out and then they bang it out. It was mm-hmm. good banging. It was. It was good banging. Then they bang it out the next day while he's, he's making pancakes and then she sits on a chair and they have chair banging. Yeah, although it was, and we can talk about this later, but it was anatomically confusing. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's one of these books where you don't, yeah. Where is he? Um, yeah. And, you know, she is full on in love with him by this point. And, but still doesn't 100% trust him. No, but I mean, so she's like, very, if, she, if, he, if he steals this fucking diamond, I'm going to be so hurt. Yeah, she's very practical about it. She's like, well, crap. You know, <laughs> I'm in love with this guy. But and throughout the whole thing, I mean, like, and Kay Hooper doesn't think you're stupid. So she's yeah. like leaving all these clues about, huh, the age back isn't working. Yeah. Like all these things that you figure have to be like an inside man or, you know, yeah. whatever's going on. And and nobody is that dumb in this, although you, she kind of like lets you think that maybe Morgan is that dumb. I don't know. I felt like, well, about the clipboard. Oh, uh, well, yeah. So we're... <sighs> Morgan's like trying to solve things on her own. She is like knows that Quinn knows about like who Nightshade really is. There's another guy. She won't tell her. He knows, but he tells her that he won't tell yeah. her because then he knows that <laughs> I said the word knows so many times in this, but he knows that she won't be able to keep it off her face, which no. is frankly reasonable. I know. Like you don't don't tell me because you know I'm gonna be like no, I know. I can't keep a secret. No, so. God, no. So. Anyway, the everybody book, who knows me is like, mm-hmm. the book culminates with like, they have the opening for the exhibit, you know, and she just intuits when the night of the, the supposed heist is going to be. So she follows Quinn to an unmarked location. No, she figures out who it is. Well, she thinks she, yeah, well, yeah. she thinks, but like she follows him and we have this confrontation between Quinn and this guy named Leo and Quinn sees her before he talks to Leo and he's like, no matter what happens, no matter what, you stay hidden. And we know exactly what's going to happen at that point because we've, we've read books before. Yeah. So, you know, they have like this conversation and Leo's like, ha ha ha. And then, you know, shoots Quinn three times in the chest and then leaves. And she's like, oh, God. And, you know, obviously he's wearing a bulletproof vest. They, they never shoot you in the head when you're wearing a bulletproof vest. Never, ever, ever. I tell you, if I ever have the occasion to shoot somebody, <laughs> I can shoot him in all the places. <laughs> so, you know, they later, you know, Leo goes to rob the place and everybody else is waiting there and he gets arrested. And they have a great, um, it's like a... Um, uh, I guess Port Cullis <laughs> comes down. Like they have one of those great like museum heist secret um, security system things yes. that goes off because it's all they they all of course knew that all that's business with the um with the HVAC at all and there was an inside man and they were ready for all of it like it was yes, all it was so yeah and then that's when somehow in the midst of all this their mom gets called (laughs) and she shows up from australia and that's when it's like oh they're all half brothers and yeah but before you know beforehand quinn had told her that he loved her and they all live happily ever after so (laughs) ta-da but like uh, that that was quick to say because we skipped a lot of like charity dinners like, like yeah. a lot happened in this book a lot of fun super spy shit too yeah i mean i i enjoyed all of the that kind of chloroforming nonsense and the whole chloroform. creeping around and yeah all, that all stuff. the stuff like he teaches her how to pick a lock and like it's very cute and there's reasonable suspicion throughout the whole thing yeah too. because like uh like certainly when uh, she woke up and he wasn't there like if it wasn't an international international jewel thief i'd been like oh he got to get donuts but like and he was cooking breakfast but i still thought was he always good? You know, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, it allows like seeds of doubt in your mind. Yeah. So it, it's well, um, well played. You kind of find out that like the whole time he's been like international jewel thief for good. You know, like because <laughs> his mom's like, oh, yeah, I know he's been doing this, and he's been working for such and such secretly. Yeah, he had not just been working for Interpol today. Yeah, but also the whole time. Yeah, so like his alias is international jewel thief kind of guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> which is. 
amazingly ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Which I do kind of love. Yeah, it was great. All right, so question time. Okay. Does he have big dick energy or big dick energy? I'm sort of like, I mean, I enjoyed him, but he wasn't, I, I wasn't fully connected to him. I enjoyed the idea of him, yes. I guess, more. Oh, he was a blonde man. So I know how you feel. Like, and usually I don't mind a blonde man, like, you know, but like. He's a bit of a bland man, I guess. Like, Jewel Thief done good is not as interesting as Jewel Thief. It was, I think because. I think, I mean, she, it's a, like, Kay Hooper can write suspense, and she writes really well. I wish, it'll be interesting if we read the other ones to see how much more connected, because I do think mm -hmm. what's interesting about her series versus other people's series is that usually in these series, a lot of times you can read them, like we said, as standalones. Yeah. And I think that she does so much development of people's characters in these other books yeah, because there was a lot of flirty things that they refer to in the other books that happened between them that I wonder if I would have liked him more. It's pretty ballsy on Love Swept's uh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, behalf, knowing that, like, you know, that it is not usual to have, like, a lot of continuity in a series with that. And even in modern romance novels, like, you know, generally speaking, you can just start with number right, three. Right. That's what know? I'm saying. So that's, yeah, like, I think that this is one that really builds on it. So I think... Because you kind of get the sense that he's the, he's supposed to be the rakish one and that Jared is supposed to be the serious, like, cause he's the oldest, like responsible one that Wolf's kind of the like dour one because he's with Storm who's fun. Max, you don't really know cause Max, I mean, he's in it, but it's not like a lot. No. I would have liked to have been, yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see how, if when we read the other ones, like how their personalities shape up a little bit more. And I do think we should read at least one. Mm -hmm. Let's read the one with Wolf and Storm. Yeah. Now the sex that they have is great. Oh yes. It's very florid and it is hard to be like, it is, there's not a mm -hmm. lot of slot A going mm -hmm. into tab B, but it's, you know, he is making sure she is having a good time yes yes but it is it is always like kind of frustrating to me when i cannot figure out how he got there yeah like she's sitting <laughs> yeah. in a chair and all of a sudden they're banging in a chair but he's on the like floor how tall is the chair or how short is the chair yeah, i was like what's or how yeah i was like what has this and like yeah i've always like you have to tell me how you got into positions so. right yeah i know I, I, unless it's like super vague and that's fine yeah but you can't be specific and, and then, then be like wait whoa, whoa, what had to yeah. Do you have like short thighs? Like, what? Like, how is this sex working? What's happening? Is she yeah. like bent in the chair? Yeah. Because they said it must not be comfortable for him. And I was like, well, what is happening? Like, how's this chair sex working? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, would you talk shit with or about the heroine? And I want to spend some time on her because I really liked her. I did too. And she brings up one of the points that we've talked, like, that we've talked about in the past in that, you know, we've always talked about how the hot one is usually like the party girl. Like, yeah. And she is is kind of really well written in that she is really attractive and like has these measurements and stuff. And like she deals with that. Oh, you're just a dumb, you mm -hmm. know, like she has this terrible fiance, ex fiance. Oh, yeah. That like you, they, she talks about how he wanted her to dress and act and be. And then they took like they were in college and they had to take IQ tests, which, you know, we'll talk about like IQ tests or not, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. No. But. You know, she scored 20 points higher and he couldn't handle it. So they broke up. Like, I thought it was really I really thought that was interesting. And she does button down a lot because, you know, she has struggled as a professional woman in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, to be taken seriously with all those, you know, yeah. junk in the trunk and babes in the bra. And one of the things I did enjoy, too, was that Quinn talks about, like, when you're kind of in his headspace, he's like, obviously, she's beautiful, but she's so smart. And she's not, but she's not just smart. She's funny and she's kind. And, like, mm -hmm. she, there's really a lot of descriptive attributes that aren't just her, you know. Her limpid eyes. Yeah, her, yeah. Like, it's really about her as a person. I like that a and lot. her whole personality. And I thought that was really well done. And she seems super fun. And I thought it was great. And we'll get, it leads into qu the next question. You know, because she seems, she seems like a fully actualized person. Mm -hmm. That she seems well-rounded and that, you know, she's got this museum job. I mean, her parents are obviously, <laughs> she has the dead in a car accident parents. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that she's got this career and she's motivated and, you know, but she's not just she's not just the like stern. Yeah. Like, no, I will accept no fun. Yeah. No, like, I follow international jewel thieves in the paper. Like, she's really funny. She's sassy and like she gives it back to him and like, you know, 
I mean, she does do some stupid things like following international jewel thieves to hideouts <laughs> and stuff. But like, I really enjoyed her, and I think <laughs> like we, she's somebody that she's written by a woman who likes women. Yes. And none of that Jude Devereaux shit. No, like she doesn't. Yeah, she likes women and celebrates women and celebrates women's friendships, which leads yes. to. So back to the bitch. Um, there is one other main woman in this storm who is the cat shoulder lady um, who is uh, marrying Wolf. And uh, yeah, so it, it would be normally Storm is the very tall, elegant blonde and Morgan is the curvaceous brunette. Uh, and they're good friends and they respect each other and like each other a great deal and talk about things that are not dudes. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and rare it, for an older romance novel. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It was, if you got a different hair color, usually it is. <laughs> usually your mortal enemies. But like, yeah, they have it was really sweet and they had a good relationship. And and obviously you don't know anybody's like ethnicity in this. They did describe somebody as the the darker man. And I was like. What does this mean? But in a book of that age, it could just mean, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. It's yeah. hard to parse that out. So, you know, it's. Yeah. But it was, I really liked their friendship. And I think, again, for a love swept where it's 200 pages. Yeah. She does a good job of putting that in there. And I think. Mark has half the plots in the previous book. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it's, I, li- I thought they did a, an excellent job with that. So when it comes to consent, is this book more Mar- Robin Thicke or Marvin Gaye? Oh, our dude, he needs verbal consent. Mm. Although, I mean, like, he does start off with somebody who's been chloroformed. <laughs> that is true. But we, we still don't know if he was the chloroformer. We think he must not have been because whoever, I mean. we Choked has, her, yeah. Yeah, choked her. I mean, left a handprint on her neck. But there was this weird description yeah. of it. Like, when like she, his hard body behind her and stuff. So I was wondering, like, part of me thinks, I like. Was too. I was like, is Leo really not bad? Like, because, like, we're talking about how hard bodied Leo was. Yeah. Like, But it was, yeah, it was interesting. But, yeah. Despite being chloroform, but she also was like, I'm ready to do this. Yeah. Because he was like, I need you to tell me. Yeah. yeah. No, he asked for verbal consent. Yes. So it's. I mean, ideally, he would have waited to a non chloroforming evening. Like it, but oh, <laughs> can you imagine the headache, though? Oh, my God. It's like, I, if I get chloroform, that's that's my day. I don't want to do anything mm-hmm. else. Like, I'm done. Post chloroforming. I think it was actually great that she, um, and I guess this goes to outfits, but so she starts out like after the chloroforming in her like bunny slippers and her sweatpants and all. And then after the uh, post chloroforming sex, she busts out the, the floaty robe. Oh, and yeah. The, yeah. She's got the thing on. <laughs> I thought it was interesting too, and I, I enjoyed was that, you know, they make mention like with her previous fiance you know because again she's like a, a chestier person that she never really like because she's always been like self-conscious about it and that you know like her ex she was like eh, about her boobs and they're like you know with quinn she's like yes this is amazing touch them put your hands on yeah, them. yeah. like i liked that i liked the like body confidence that she kind of gained from just being just honest appreciation of her yes. yeah like that was awesome um how badly are you judging your mom off for reading this book? This is very on par for what she yeah, had. This is, this is great. This is it yeah. was so fun. There's nothing really problematic in it. this. This is just dumb fun, dumb early '90s, late '80s fun. Oh yeah. So would Scarlett Johansson be in the movie? I mean, it's all white people. Yeah. So again, like we talked about, I mean, it's San Francisco. It's white people, and notably 100 percent white town. Yeah. 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 So so white. <laughs> so white. And then yeah, it's also like. You know, with it being this art exhibit or this like not art, but like this mysteries of the past. I mean, they do a good like it's very just about jewels, but it's yeah. also not like. I mean, they're definitely like a, where are these jewels. They yeah. give you a history of the jewels and it's very English, but I'm like, we know where those jewels came yeah. from. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, no. OK, so the history of the one diamond that's cursed. An Englishman found it in a river. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like a river in India. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, oh, you just happened to be there, like, just found it. You I will say, like, walking too, around, found it. As the museum professional in the room. Yes. <laughs> you are. Like, it made me, like, like, where she's, like, when the, the, the curator who ends up, like, being the, the double crosser. First of all, I was like, what? The curator is like the person that puts this shit together. It's not her. I don't yeah. know what her job is. Oh, it never tells you what her job is. Just tits walking around. Yeah. Oh, tits walking around. Like, I mean, I would pay somebody to do that. Like the thing that got me, the thing that killed me. And this is how, like when she's like, I, I placed these labels, but I never read them. I was like, like what the fuck? What are you doing? Like, no, that you, you would be. Are you in development? <laughs> like you're the cop. Yeah. I mean, like, are you the marketing person? No, you like be the marketing person. But like, she might be the marketing. And that would be fine if she were. But it, it, it implies that she's in charge of this. Mm. 
And she's got this clipboard and she's in charge of like the HVAC. Like, you and didn't all read that your stuff. text. And then like how the everybody was like, here's the other thing. Here, here's the thing. Whenever you go to a museum, same with you go to a lot of libraries, how they're so cold. There's uh-huh. a reason for it. Yeah. yeah. Like we keep, uh, you know, you keep them. And it's not new. Every museum has uh, has environmental settings. You've got this little thing that you have to go check every single day for your humidity and all this kind of stuff. And so when well, they were like, well, it got a little hot. And she's like, no big deal. Like, no, that is absolutely not. She would be. Well, I think she's out. saying that because it's a front for that. They know that he's going to sneak in through the HVAC guy. Uh-huh. I will say, OK, that that may be the case in a, like museums now done in America or whatever. I have walked through the Louvre and the the um, the skylights were dripping on my head. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, make, it makes me like, oh. Because I'm like, what you're doing to these paintings? When we weren't like, I, I can't not be though. We went to this museum today and I was showing somebody like we were looking at quilts and I was like, well, if you look right here, you see this dark stuff. This is foxing. And this is what happens when you have mm-hmm. the quilts you know, folded over time and blah, blah, blah. Right. And so like she would have absolutely been <laughs> so type A anal. Like, but I, that you're not reading your exhibit. Text? Oh, my God. That well, you. Or are you like an intern? Did you do just but, like, the, you put like the tape on the back? Like what did you, like you have this whole collection of stuff and you don't know the the history of that stuff inside, outside, backwards, forward. And if she were marketing, then she would have to know that. Yes. Our I marketing like, people at the library know a lot about her I'm, I'm more than I, I do like, because nobody tells me about stuff anymore. I was like, what are you doing? Like, I guess she's just tits walking around. I was like, yeah. you don't know what her job is. But She like, has a clipboard. But like they're acting like the curator is the devil. And I was like, this is hilarious. Like the curator is the person that cares the most about this stuff. Like the curator is the one that would like not get it stolen, not get it stolen, not put it up as like, ha ha ha. We're going to use this as a, you know, no, the (laughs) curator, you would have had to tie the curator up. You wouldn't tell the curator about your plan. No (laughs) No way. Not now. And like, okay. So what about the insurance? So, okay. The insurance people do. Is that max? Maybe is the insurance people. I think no, it was his collection. Because Lloyd's of London comes up though, like the Lloyd's of London is a uh, oh, wolf going to be wolf. real pissed. Wolf works for them. That's what it is. And yeah. Ma- it's Max's collection. Because can you imagine telling your insurance people, "I can't get insurance on my house because my dog is a pit bull." Yeah, I like <laughs> you know, yeah, the insurance shit is crazy. I finally got insurance for my house, but it was a whole thing. So yeah, I don't think the Lloyd's of London, if they had known about this, no. they will not be insuring anything for these people at like, any time in the future. Yeah. Because you know who doesn't have a sense of humor? Lloyds of London. <laughs> so, yeah, her job was very vague. I was like, I don't know what she does, but. Yeah, I think tits walking around should be like a. a you job. should be able to degree in that. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I should have. Look, okay, so I was uh, trying to find spices in my cabinet yesterday. And uh, so my, my, my tits walking around um, uh, knocked an entire thing into the stove and set like stuff on fire. Yeah, so <laughs> just looking around can be hazardous. It can be. Yeah. You got to be really good. You have to be certified. So you're not leaving the house looking like that. There's so many outfits. outfits. Beaded, beaded vests. I had every outfit that she wore, and I wore them to church. She had, like, the the hose and, like, the, the fitted pencil skirt and uh, the white blouse with, like, the, um, the puffity sleeves and the vest on top with the beading and brocade. I had that. I had a brocade vest. Oh, my God. Ugh. And then, like, she kind of, like, lets her hair down and her tits out and, and wears, like, this uh, kind of jersey, like, a sweater kind of in, in all business. And, and like, I thought it was interesting, too. Like, she talked about, like, you know, she had to do an interview or something and she had her hair down. And she doesn't ever usually like to wear her hair down mm-hmm. for interviews because people think she's too sexy. Yeah. Because, I mean, we all know that uh, mm-hmm. the bigger your boobs are... The more quote unquote inappropriate thing people think you are, no matter if you are dressed exactly like everybody else. Exactly. Yes. So there's some good clothes. Again, beaded vest. Yeah, and then like uh, her morning after, um, she she wears the I assume it's like um, polyester. Yeah, the short robe. Ooh. Her little silky robe. Yeah, and it was like uh, at at the end of it, it was all undone. uh, (laughs) Oh yeah, it was their weird chair sex that we don't understand how it (laughs) happened. And the thing is, what they don't describe is what would actually happen is that her butt would just slid off that thing. Oh my god, I'm like (laughs) in that polyester robe. But yeah, there are good outfits. There are good very early nineties outfits in this um, in this book. Um, Would your twelve year old self have dog eared any pages? Yes, in a way. Like, I mean, it's very hot, but it's also very, like, it's descriptive until it's not. Yeah, which I always hate about these things. I think you should either be vague and just be soft folds, yeah. or you should, like, 
be not pick. Yeah, like it's, you know, above the chest stuff was very like descriptive. They always do that. They are all about, but then the second you get yeah. all of the belly button, it just all gets yeah. a little. So it was like, I mean, I couldn't it, even tell if it was oral or if it was PIV sometimes. Yeah, I was like, what is happening? <laughs> so it's, yeah, it was very. <sighs> it felt hot though. Yeah, it was hot. Like the setting was Because we've read books that were way more descriptive that were not hot at all. I'm thinking about that um, that silhouette that had the pilot in it. That was very tab A, slot B, but like it was the least sexy thing that we had oh, ever God, read. Yeah. yeah. It was like a manual. Like, yeah. Was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> step one, keep flying the plane. <laughs> that one. Yeah. So, what pairs nicely with a dumpster fire? I think our Martha Shard is perfect. Oh, my God. Y'all, go get you a bottle of the Martha Shard. It is worth the 15 bucks. Is there any more in there? Give me some more of that Martha Shard. It's like a bitch. But yeah, it's so great because, again, you get the Martha thing <laughs> on nothing. the and then lastly should a human in the 21st century read this book i think so uh it will be really interesting to have read the other one yeah I've, I've this is of... very unlike any silhouette i've ever read yeah it was very like plot heavy which yeah. it was good i enjoyed yeah. that yeah all right so this has I'm sorry it wasn't uh, sorry let me restate that it was very unlike every any love swept i have ever yeah. read it was very it, it like Kay Huber does a good job of writing like suspense, and I enjoyed that. Yeah. So this has been our what was the name of this damn book? It's so crazy. All for Quinn, which is weird. I kept on okay. It's like when you pass like a hair salon and with a name that doesn't make any sense, and you try to like figure out the pun. Like all for Quinn. All for Quinn. Yeah, it was very strange. Yeah. So this has been all for Quinn by Kay Hooper. We are bodice tipplers. You can find us on Twitter at BTipplers, Facebook, bodice tipplers, bodice tipplers.com, Instagram, bodice tipplers. Again, our Patreon, patreon.com slash bodice Yep, that one. And then, like we said, if you don't want to give us money, we understand, but like, follow, rate, review, all that stuff, and we'll see you next time. Bodice Tipplers is part of the Frolic Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts.